I've been talking a lot about hormones and hormone balance. I wrote a book, The Hormone Shift, but you know what we're not talking about? We are not talking about birth control. And so many women are on birth control for different reasons. If you're in your teens or your 20s, you may actually be on birth control for birth control. But there are a lot of you that are coming into our exam rooms at Center Spring MD and you're on birth control for hormone balancing. That's not what we want. We want to make sure we're using birth control for the right reasons. Let me tell you why. Birth control comes in a couple of different forms, right? There are birth control pills. There is the IUD. There's the ring. There are all kinds of different options nowadays if you're actually wanting to use birth control. But it comes with two particular hormones. And we need to understand them because it really plays a role into why you should or maybe should not go on different forms of birth control. The hormones in most birth control pills are either estradiol, which is a biologically active form of estrogen. It is the estrogen in our bodies. But remember, we don't just have estradiol. We actually have four different estrogens. And when we over sort of supplement or provide estradiol, there is a price or a little bit of a fallout around that supplementation. So we're gonna talk about that in a minute. The second hormone in birth control, whether it's an IUD or whether it's a birth control pill, is progestin. Progestin is a synthetic form of progesterone, which is what we naturally have. So we have progesterone, we make progesterone. Progesterone is actually made both in the adrenal glands and through your ovaries, but we don't actually make progestin. So birth control, both birth control pills and IUDs contain estradiol and progestin. There are some that are just estradiol, there are also some that are just progestin, and there are some that are both. But here's the issue. If you have poor gut health, or you have the gene MTHFR, I'm gonna do a bunch of alphabet soup in just a second, so bear with me. Hopefully you're taking notes and you're paying attention to some of these genetic markers. But MTHFR, COMT, CYP1B1, these are genetic SNPs that really give you trouble when it comes to metabolizing estradiol and progestin. So it's important to know your overall health, right? So that's why we go back to hormone balancing and really getting into, before you jump to go on a birth control pill, really getting into where's my gut health, where's my liver health, what is my genetic profile, because it's going to help you make the right decision about your birth control options. There are some pills with a lot of estradiol in it. There are heavier estrogen pills. If you have some of these genetic SNPs, you're gonna feel tired and puffy and bloated and really gain weight very easily on a strong estradiol-only pill. The same can happen with a progestin-only pill. Same symptoms and same side effects where you just feel super bloated, puffy, achy, tired, uh, and it can and it can impact your mood as well. So understanding kind of what the landscape of your body is, right? That holistic approach, like where are you and what is your hormone tolerance can help you decide if the pill is right for you or do you need to choose an IUD or do you need something incredibly low dose to help you with birth control? So when you're thinking about birth control, the first step is really understanding what your genetic profile is, what your family history is, what your gut health looks like, what your liver health looks like, and then are your nutrients optimized to support birth control? Because as you go on something like the birth control pill, we're finding that it actually depletes the body of key nutrients. And those include your B vitamins, magnesium, for example, is another one, zinc, and even some of the other minerals. So looking at your overall hormone profile is important in this scenario as well. Now, typically what's happening, right? You'll go into the doctor's office and there's a menu of birth control options and your doctor will prescribe one, not really get into some of these other concepts around what you should be thinking about before you actually start birth control. I hope as you're watching this, you're kind of thinking through this algorithm. First question is, do you actually need birth control? If the answer is yes, then the next step is where's your overall health so you can decide which form of birth control is best for you. If your answer was no, then you don't necessarily need the birth control pill, you need hormone balancing. 
For those of you with PCOS, or you're having really heavy periods, or you're having painful periods, or you even have something like PMDD, right, where your mood just tanks right around your period or right before your period, the birth control pill should not be your first answer. All of those symptoms are a call to action, a call for you to dive deeper into your hormone health and understand how it's a vital sign, and it really truly is trying to help you understand what your entire body is doing. All right, so I hope that helps you in this conversation around birth control pills, birth control, what your options are, and where and what you need to be thinking about before you actually start it. Remember, I post new videos every week. Don't forget to like and subscribe.